What has two foot switches, four buttons, eight knobs, and a hefty instruction manual? It's the Electro Harmonics Attack Decay Tape Reverse Simulator. And you might want to grab some popcorn for this one. This pedal is really built around these two knobs, Attack, Decay. Hey, that's the name of the pedal. Uh, attack refers to the initial hit of the note, or the pluck of the string, and the decay is what happens as energy applied to that string starts to wear off. Something like this. With the attack time minimized and the decay time maximized, it pretty much sounds like a regular note, which makes sense since you can't really speed up that initial pluck. By raising the attack knob, we're stretching out the time that that note takes to swell to its maximum amplitude, kind of pushing that peak back a little bit. <laughs> And then by lowering the decay, we're artificially shortening the amount of time the note hangs around before completely disappearing. Now, a pretty common guitar trick for solos is to ride a volume pedal or the volume knob on your guitar, so you hit the note and then bring up the volume, kind of like this. That's cool, and you've heard it in a lot of songs, and if we set the decay back up high and lower the attack down to about 9 o'clock, we can emulate that sort of thing, which is what I did in that opening demo there. Kind of in that same ballpark, if we ramp up the attack time and lower the decay time, we get a long ramp up and then a sharp cutoff, which kind of looks like a reversed version of our vanilla envelope process. And this is why they call it the tape reverse simulator. Now, show of hands. Who was surprised to hear a tremolo effect in there? When I saw it in the list of features for the pedal, I was like, that has to be a mistake, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Normal attack decay is attack and then decay, and then it holds until another note is detected. But 
by putting the pedal into continuous envelope mode, it starts the next cycle as soon as the previous one is finished, giving us a tremolo. <laughs> And then just for fun, something else I wasn't able to fit into that first song. There's this old trick for getting a banjo type sound from a guitar where you feed some paper through the strings down by the bridge. With a short envelope and a short decay with a little more of the dry signal in the mix, we can get something kind of like that. Normally, I save the second demo jam for the end of the video to keep people watching, but there's just a whole lot more that I want to show off, and I feel like it's always better to show those things in context. So here we go, demo jam number two. Let me explain myself here. For the first section there, I was using the effects loop of the pedal, and that's a really nice feature to have because consider a delay pedal. If we put a delay pedal up front, then all of the echoes are going to keep triggering the sensor. And if we put it at the end, the pedal is going to keep echoing long after the decay has closed off. This loop puts the effects between the detector and the envelope effect, so that way, the echo effect appears as the attack is coming in and then disappears once it decays out. That means we can set up a really dense and thick and fun and repeating delay setting, but we'll only hear it for that attack decay window. And that's what I did in here. <laughs> And then I brought in the fuzz distortion of the pedal for something a little crazy. Just like the original OG Attack Decay, this has a fuzz distortion circuit built right in, which they call harmonics, with an X, like electroharmonics. And we've got these three little knobs to dial that in, and this left foot switch to engage it. <laughs> And you probably already noticed this, but the H LED lights up when the harmonics feature is engaged, and the P LED lights up when it detects a pluck. That's P for pluck. Now, right now we're in mono mode. It's treating all the sounds as one, 
regardless of pitch. Putting this into poly mode makes it listen for individual notes and handles them each individually, meaning we can play one note and let it swell in and then hit another note while that one's still ringing out and both can kind of do their own thing. And if you've watched enough of my demos, you know that I really like to lean on double stops and triads. With the poly mode, we can really let those notes ring out and give a dramatic effect. I know I've mentioned this a couple times before, but the way that I like to set up my guitar pedal board is with a tuner, a compressor, a drive or two, some sort of modulation, a delay, and then something fun just for me. Just something to keep in my pocket for the third set when people start to think they've got us all figured out. What makes this even more practical as a surprise tool that will help us later are these little buttons up here. Once we've cooked up something good, you just hold down one of these buttons, wait until it stops blinking, and now everything, the fuzz, the poly setting, all these knobs are stored instantly. And then we can press it again and they're instantly recalled. We've got three slots to store things in and they've really thought of everything. You can go through those presets live by just holding down the left switch and then tapping it to the preset you want and then holding it down again. There's quite a bit more to this pedal, like an internal compressor. There is the ability to adjust the shape of the attack and decay sweeps. There's all the expression pedal stuff, plus an external clock triggering function. But I have to draw the line somewhere. I mean, the instruction manual for this thing is 24 pages long, but I have some thoughts on this pedal that I want to get out there. Because, you know, most of the time you see an envelope-based effect, it's a filter, like an Ottawa. The, the Keeley Bubbletron, favorite of mine, it does that, and it takes it a little bit further, letting us use it like a Dynatrem. But as a volume-based effect, I think the Attack Decay is a fun and refreshing option. I mean, people obsess over the boss slow gear, but I think that's mostly because it's old, rare, and valuable. This takes the OG Attack Decay and gives it a digital makeover. And that's good because those original units were only available from 1980 to 1981, and they command big dollars today. I'm certainly not in the market for one. And you know what? I sometimes find it amazing how people will complain about the lack of innovation in effects and then go and bounce a rent check because there's a brand new shimmer verb out there. Or maybe I'm just getting old. Nah. I think this pedal is a unique and extremely practical way to extend the sound you've got. And trust me, I've really only scratched the surface here. I've seen what some of you can do, and there's much exploring to be done. So whatever you do, keep playing, keep it bold. I'll catch you on the next one.